So, I made this scratch mining game. You can mine, buy new stuff, you know, basic stuff. But I was wondering, can I make it multiplayer? But not any kind of multiplayer, 100 player multiplayer. I came up with next plan. First we'll make you can see other players. Next we'll make sure all players are synchronized. And lastly we are going to add special features, which are exclusive to multiplayer games. And all of this will be possible due to this. Cloud variable. This is very unique scratch block, because it allows us to see what other people are doing. Each time a cloud variable is changed, its value gets updated on scratch server, which then can be seen by everyone. So if we make script to store x position of our player in it, we can make other sides move the player at the same position. We can make another cloud variable for Y coordinate. And now the character can be anywhere. But still, there is only one player on screen. To make one more, we'll make X2 and Y2, which will represent the second player. Well done! We did it! We made the multiplayer in Scratch! Who knew it was so easy? Except it is not. You see, there is not one problem, not even two. There are three problems I have to fix. Memory limits. There are only 10 cloud variables allowed. In case of 100 players, that will be at least 100 cloud variables. The other solution must be found. Only numbers allowed. Scratch limits content of cloud variables to only numbers. The player username contains letters and special signs. The other solution must be found. High latency. The rate cloud variables are updated as 0.1 second or higher. This is 10 frames per second at the best. This will result in choppy movement. The other solution must be found. Now I will fix this. Listen closely. <coughs> The scratch cloud limit is maximum 10 cloud variables. The thing we can do, instead of storing x, y, username and other stuff in multiple cloud variables, we can package all of player data in one line. Scratch join block is perfect for this, but we must separate each value with some unique character, in this case semicolon, because when trying to read data from this line, we must know where each thing ends. And now we only need one cloud variable per player. But we cannot store letters in cloud variables, remember? Because of this we will convert each character into a number. For each character we will make a costume, numbers, letters, A, B, C, D and so on. But we also need underscore and hyphen because those characters can appear in username. And of course semicolon which is used for separating. Now for each character from the package data we use switch costume to block. And then using costume number we get what is the actual number of that character. But it's important to check if number is smaller than 10. Then we must add 0 in front. That is important because each two digits must represent a single character. This is now finished, now we need to decode the line from the other side. We iterate through each pair of digits and then use switch costume to block same as before. But you may ask, wait, first time we use this block to convert character to number, how we can use the same block to convert number to character? Good question. Scratch check if the input is number or text. If it is text, like in the first case, it will try to find costume with the same name as text. But if it is number, it just switch costume with that index. And then you can use costume name block to get what character it is. But still, this only works for 10 players, because there are only 10 cloud variables they can use. To make it work for 100 players, we will make each user change random cloud variable in random time. So what is the secret behind this? Well, there is no secret. Basically, you keep doing random stuff until things start to work. Like everything in life. Now let's test whether it really works. It works 
But we don't want other players to look as choppy. We can solve this by faking movement. If we know the position of player last time we saved its data, using some math tricks we can predict what actually happened. Although it will not be real time. But trust me, nobody will care. Actually, forget what I just said. Everything works perfectly. Okay, now let's make it work inside mining game. So, I did some coding of camera. If you wonder why there is four times more code, please don't ask me. Now you can see where other people are, but you can also see their pickaxe, outfit and hat. But the most significant upgrade I added is position buffer. Instead of storing one player position in cloud variable, it stores multiple positions over time. Then, in case the cloud variable is late for example one second, you can use those previous position to simulate what actually happened. But there is still one problem. You can see other players go through a rock. This happens because each stone is generated randomly using Scratch a random block, and each player has its unique arrangement. This is a problem with player synchronization. Each player should see others in the same world doing exact same stuff. Otherwise, unexpected things will happen, like players going through rocks. So how we are going to fix this? I made this pseudo random number generator. The thing it does, it generates many random numbers for specific seed value. So if seed is the same, it will always give the same random numbers. Each dot here will represent a rock in the game. Now the point is to give the players same seed, for example current time. That way each player will get some random numbers, therefore can generate rocks at the same positions as others. Except it is 10 times more complicated than that. You see, because the way PRNG works, we must create random values in chunks, which I here call cycles. Each cycle has its own seed, which is calculated using current time. Using seeds, then you can generate the random values which are used for generating rocks. But the problem is on the start of the game. Sometimes you have to load stones from two different cycles at once. That's why code is so complex. Every time second passes, old stone is destroyed and new one is created from current cycle. Nevertheless, you can see how it shows the same rocks for each player, what is what we were trying to implement. Now let's add another feature. Wait a minute, what is this pop sound? Cloud variable limit exceeded. Do you remember when I said there was three problems with cloud variables? Well, there are four. Cloud variables have limit of a maximum 256 characters. So how we are going to fix this? Well, remember when I said we must convert each character into two digits? Why? But really, why? If you have number 500, why don't store it as a 500? It will halve the character number, right? 4 is 4, 0 is 0, 2 is 2. But what if the position is negative, for example minus 300? In that case, simply we add some value like 500, then when loading, subtract that value back. 400 minus 500 is negative 100. But what about the decimal numbers? They have point character. In that case, we multiply it by some power of 10, like 1000, floor it to remove any decimal points. When loading, we then divide by same number and we get the actual number. Okay, but don't forget about semicolon. How we know where each value end. Simply, for each value, we will reserve fixed amount of places in cloud variables. For example, if we know some number goes from 0 to 999, if for example that number is currently 5, we store it as 005. Then you will know for sure where each value starts. Ok, now it works. You can see how small cloud variable is now, even 2 times smaller. Man, I never thought it would be so complex. I even had to add comments in the Scratch project explaining what lists do. Now let's finally add those multiple features. Finally something I don't have to spend whole week for. First we will add cat statue. The way it works, each time a player donates money to statue, whole server will get some kind of boost. First we'll make image of statue. Hmm. Why does it look like a robot? Give me a minute. 
well, it is still of questionable quality. Oh, I have an idea. I'll just recycle the cat statue I made for the video Top 100 Scotch Games. Hmm. I'll just give it final touches. The separate platform from the statue for upgrades, and that's finished. To encourage players to donate money, I made server messages which shows who donated. I also made special items which can be acquired only by donating money. And lastly, I made a leaderboard showing players who donated the most. Another feature I added are emotes, useful for telling players where gold ore has spawned or to cheer the newly joined player. And believe or not, everything is finished. It's finally time to release the game. I set up this countdown so everybody can join at the same time. My personal goal is to reach 100 players. Can we do it? I share the game. And the players started slowly joining. It's very good feeling to see everything working properly after so much time spending on making it its work. In 3 minutes, total 10 players have joined. 15 minutes, 25 players. Is there a chance for 100 players? 30 minutes, the player count started massively increasing. But it seems it just summoned starting project multiple times. In reality, it has 40 players, which is still high amount. Unfortunately, from that moment, the player count was in a peak. From now, it only started decreasing. Looks like I'm never going to have 100 players. Well, just for science, it's hacking time. Okay, I know this is cheating, but the point is that the game is capable of having 100 players. It was fun experience. It didn't manage to reach 100 players, but it is okay. I put link of the game in description. Maybe someday we will reach 100 players. And if you like the video, please check my others as well. Bye. Hmm, hackers. I hope nobody will spend 3 days creating anti-hack measures. Hmm.